Hey, it's Nathan, and today I wanted to talk about some topology things, and I haven't really talked about a lot of topology things in depth on this channel. However, the construction that I do in this video is very general, so if you don't have a lot of intuition behind topology, I recommend taking a look at one of these videos first. Um, there's also some linked in the description down below of things you could look at before doing this video. Um, however, the stuff that comes up in this video doesn't actually use a lot of technical things from topology. It's mostly just working with definitions. So um, with that being said, uh, this is all of the stuff that I want to talk about today. Um, so I want to talk about a method that you can use uh, given some set and some way you think about uh, what's happening around a point in that set, you can generate a topology. And this is called the generalized neighborhood-based construction. But in order to do that, I need to talk about some other stuff that comes up before we get to the generalized case of this type of construction. In point set topology, it can be helpful sometimes to think about what's the fundamental quality of space around a particular point that forms open sets around that point. And in many of the well-studied cases like that of metric spaces and an order topology, for example, this is core in some sense to the definition of these topological spaces. I do have to concede though that the way that I'm sort of building this intuition is a little bit backwards. So what do I mean by that? For example, when you define a topology on a metric space or a topology generated by the metric of a metric space, you define it as an open set contains a open ball around every point. And then later on, you prove that an open ball is open without the air quotes. However, when you're describing a topological space based on open sets around a point, what you're doing is you are reformulating the topology given in terms of this neighborhood base construction of a topology. In particular, a neighborhood base at a point X in the space is a collection of open sets such that for each open set containing X, there exists such a set in the neighborhood base, which is a subset of that set. And further, that any two sets in the collection, there is a third set in the collection, which is a subset of the intersection of the two of them. Finding such a neighborhood base for each X may be advantageous because it in turn lets you generate a basis by collecting together all of the neighborhood bases about each individual point. So a basis for topology is a collection of open sets such that for each element of the space, there is a basic open set containing it. And should two basic open sets have a non-empty intersection for each point in that intersection, there is a third basic open set, which is a subset of the intersection of the original two. So the first property is immediate, just by definition of this collection of sets that we formed by taking unions over a neighborhood base for each point. The second property is a little bit more involved, but it's still quick. So for two, as there is an element in that non-empty intersection, it has a neighborhood base, which is a subset of the union of the neighborhood bases. So there is a set in the proposed basis, which is a subset of the intersection of the two. Let's return to those more concrete examples of this that I mentioned back at the beginning of the video. So in the metric case, we look at balls around each point determined by the metric. In R1 standard, these are just the symmetric open intervals about each point. And in R2 standard, these are just the open disks about a point of a particular radius. For these particular examples, standard just implies that we are working with the Euclidean metric, but in general, you can really choose any metric to do this with. In the order case, on the other hand, uh, we look at all of the order-based intervals around a point, and in particular, we give special attention to the smallest and the largest elements because there's some weirdness that can happen there. So for example, if we're looking at the closed interval from zero to one with the less than ordering, the open things are the open intervals about a particular point, and then we worry about zero and one. So in the case of zero, the open intervals look like closed zero to open A, 
and for one, the open intervals look like open B to closed one. Or in other words, uh, zero is less than or equal to X, which is less than A for zero, and for one, B is less than X, which is less than or equal to one. So in general, when you go ahead and form a neighborhood base construction of a given topology, you're, you're given the topology, right? You have to know that the sets that you're putting in these neighborhood bases are open in order to effectively define a neighborhood base at each point, and then union them all up to get a basis of your choice so that you can sort of like zoom in on particular points in your open sets. However, you might want to build a topology on a set. You might want to have some set structure that is a topology on a set. It's just that you don't know how to define it, but you do know what is happening around certain points in your space. And that's where the whole generalized neighborhood base construction comes in. So now suppose that you just want to build your own topology instead. What do you do? So you, you do probably need to start with a set. So in this instance, we're just going to start with some set X. So in this instance, we just have a set. And about each point in the set, we have a system of sets such that they look kind of like a neighborhood base. That is, we can define a generalized neighborhood base about a point in this set without any topology in the following way. One, each set of the collection corresponding to the point in question contains the point in question. And two, for any two sets in the collection, there is a third set in the collection, which is a subset of the intersection of the two. The main thing to note here is that at this point in the construction, there is no topology. So whatever sets that you're specifying at each point may or may not be open when you're done with this construction. And even though we don't really know if the sets that we're using to construct this topology are open or not, we're still going to be able to construct open things in the sense of this construction with these sets. Which, I mean, that's kind of the point. We're building a topology, which means we're building a definition for what it means to be open in whatever topology that you're constructing. And so this leads to a definition, or, well, at least the way that I'm going to define it. So a set is open in the topology generated by a generalized neighborhood base construction if for every point in the set there exists a generalized neighborhood basic set about that point, which is a subset of the set. So if you know how a topology is defined, and I think I've written it on the board somewhere by this point, uh, it's actually a very good exercise to show that this thing is actually forming a topology. And it doesn't use really a lot of new things. It uses just the definitions that I've brought up in this video. So if you have the opportunity to and you have a little bit of intuition behind what a topology is, this is a great place to just hang out and try to prove it for yourself that this thing does form a topology in the general sense. However, I am going to spend just a few minutes here talking about a particular example that uh, comes up in some of my like qualifying exam problem things that I'm studying over the summer uh, that is constructed in this way. So in order to explain this example, we just need to do a little bit of geometry first. It's not a lot. It's just, it's just lines through a point. So given a point in the real plane, we're going to go ahead and define L sub X to be the set of lines through the point X in the plane. And then once we have that, L sub X, we're going to go ahead and move on to define something a little bit more complicated. So S sub X is going to be the collection of what we'll call stars about X. That is, S is an element of S sub X if for every line through X, or L in big L sub X, there exists an epsilon possibly dependent on L greater than zero, such that the line segment of radius epsilon sub L centered at X on L is a subset of S. So in other words, if you go ahead and take the ball of that radius around the point and you intersect it with the line through that point, that 
segment that is produced by intersecting the ball and the line is a subset of the star. In some way, you can think about these stars as just a potentially irregular asterisk in the plane formed by infinitely many line segments going through a particular point. It turns out that S of X defines the generalized neighborhood base about X. In particular, the first condition is forced by definition. And if you have two stars about X, for any given line, you can just take the minimum of the two epsilons that define the line segment to then construct a new star in the collection, which is a subset of the intersection of the two stars you started with. Using these generalized neighborhood bases at each point to then construct a topology using this generalized neighborhood base construction of a topology forms what many would call the radial plane topology. And so we should talk about that thing for just a little bit. So a few quick things. is actually a different topology than the standard topology on the real plane. However, the arguments I have seen for such a thing require a little bit more. I'm going to table that for this video, and we'll just talk about some things that are a little bit more accessible about the radial plane topology. One of the other things that's really cool about the radial plane topology, or one of the things that makes the radial plane topology a good, proper example of a generalized neighborhood based construction of a topology, is that there are stars that are not open sets in the radial plane topology. So again, the radial plane topology is formed by saying that every open set is such that every point in that open set has a star about it. So if you look at a particularly weird star, or like, uh, I guess a pathological one, it's very easy to make pathological stars in the radial plane topology. So saying that they're pathological doesn't <laughs> feel right, um, but it at least in the sense that mathematicians use pathological as like, constructed specifically to go against your intuition. Um, I think this still fits. So anyway, you can construct a star, let's say that you just pick a constant radius for um, all of the line segments except for one. And for that particular line segment, you make it a little bit longer um, than the rest of them. Then on that longer segment, any point on that longer segment that is strictly further out than the standard radius of the rest of the uh, segments is not going to have a star around it. So you can also be a little bit more intense or well discerning about your choice of epsilons in order to form a star that's neither open nor closed as well. So if you would like to think about that a little bit more, I think that's also a good exercise in thinking about the radial plane topology. So there's really two things that I take away from this. Well, one, generalized neighborhood bases are different than neighborhood bases, right? So when you construct a given topology with a neighborhood base, you know that the sets that you're using are open, and so you have an idea of reformulating an open set in terms of the open sets about each point in that open set. Whereas in a generalized neighborhood base construction, because some of those sets may not be open, uh, you have a little bit of local information about what's going on at a point, but you don't have a good idea of what openness means locally at a point. And so I think I said one, but I didn't really give a two. Those are those were like two things together. So one is that the generalized neighborhood based construction is different than neighborhood based construction. And then two is that you can force some local idea of what's happening around each point in the set in the topology that you want to generate. However, it doesn't really tell you everything there is to know about what openness means around a point in the generated topology. But yeah, anyway, that's all I really wanted to talk about today. As always, I am Nathan. This one was Chalk. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up and you can subscribe for more math stuff uh, that I do here on the internet, whether that be talking about just things that I find interesting to talking about how my experience as a mathematics PhD student is going. Um, yeah. Anyway, that's all I got for you today. I am Nathan. This was Chuck, and I will see you next time.